Sarpon, are we here? Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, webinar has been arranged for you today, which is being headed by Mr. Uh, Shubham Chatterjee, sir. We are extremely privileged, honored, and happy to have you here, sir. I hope that you all will be benefited and enriched by sir's today's session. Students, be attentive during the whole session and be responsible as and when required. Okay, over to you, sir. Prabhupada, thank you so much. Uh, guys, uh, I just need to have a small request. Like, I, I need to have your camera switched on. It looks very odd, right? So I, I will not take a lot of time. I know uh, time is precious for you guys. So maybe I would request you guys to have the cameras on so that I can have the interaction going. When we when we try and share the slides, is it okay for you? And we have the videos on, guys. Sarpon, am I audible? And students, am I yes, yes, sir. You are very much audible, students. If it if it is possible, please come up to video mode. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let us start uh, today's session. I, I was told by Corpun, who happens to be my student in 2015, 16, I don't remember Corpun, maybe it's 15, 17, or no, 16, 18, back at BBIT. Uh, just to brief about myself, uh, I've been into academics for almost more than 10 years. Uh, I work with brands like I'm Calcutta, I work with Techno India Group, I work with Zenzivirs, BBIT. Uh, outside Calcutta, I work with IMS Unis and Deradun. Uh, I work with ISBM Pune. Uh, and currently, I'm, I'm a full time researcher with St. Petersburg State University, Russia. Uh, unfortunately, I could not make it as of the borders of close. I was supposed to join last year, but I could not make it. And uh, I'm expecting that the borders will be open very soon and I'll be able to uh, continue my full time research out there. Okay, guys, so let us let us uh, start the presentation at any point of time you have issues you can stop me poke me bother me and, and we can have that uh, as much constructive and kind of interactive uh, possible for you guys. Okay. Okay, is it is, is the presentation visible? Can you just say a yes or a no? Anyone? That will be great. Yes, sir. This is a bit. Fantastic. Okay. So we, we are going to talk about contemporary marketing, right? So uh, before going into contemporary marketing, why don't we have a small interaction on what is meant by marketing? I would love to have volunteers who can actually uh, take us through uh, with the concepts of marketing. What is meant by marketing? Uh, uh, from a layman's perspective, if I'm not wrong, you guys are into hospitality management, right? So at some point of time, you will all be involved with interacting with your customers at different levels, right? So uh, knowingly or unknowingly, we'll be involved in, in some form of marketing activity. So what exactly, according to you guys, is uh, is marketing? Forget the, forget the term contemporary right now. What is marketing? Guys, any idea what is marketing? Sir, uh, marketing is uh, we are providing some pro uh, services or goods, um, and in return, we are getting money. This kind of thing. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So it's kind of an exchange of uh, money with products and services, right? That is precisely what yes. we understand marketing. Very. Good. But yes. unfortunately, guys, uh, I, I'm really happy that you've come up with something. But, you know, the concepts of marketing are shifting. I mean, it's, it's changing very, very rapidly. Today's consumers, we, if we try and think from a, ourselves from the consumer's perspective, 
today's consumers are are more on uh, uh, bothering. I don't know why the slides are not changed. slides. Yeah, okay. Today's consumers are more about uh, maintaining uh, something out of a product or service, right? So that this entire definition of this exchange of products and goods, which has been defined very uh, precisely by uh, Dr. Philip Kotler, if you know about that person, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a very prominent person in, in marketing domain. The, the definition or the concept of marketing has changed from just being uh, an exchange of goods or services or uh, being a, a marketplace where uh, consumers and producers are meeting. Rather, the focus has shifted, if you can see the definition, the focus has shifted more in managing profitable customer relationships. Guys, today's marketing is all about maintaining relationship with your customers. It's not just about making profit. It's not just about just pushing your products or services and someone has bought it and you say, oh, thank God, I mean, someone has produced, uh, taken my product. It's not about that. You have to understand what are you supposed to do once you're selling off your product. That is where you're trying and starting building relationship with your customers. And believe me, it's all about maintaining relationship. And if you, if, you, if you are a professional in terms of maintaining the relationship, your profits will be chipping in. So that is how today's marketing is defined as. It's, it's mainly managing profitable customer relationship. Now, there are two very simple aspects of marketing. Now, if you see on the left-hand side, the first definition talks about, uh, rather the process talks about attracting new customers by promising superior value. Now think from a very generalized perspective. Uh, there are a lot of prominent players in the market in any specific product category. Let us talk about a specific product. Let us talk about toothpaste, right? I, I, uh, I love to have examples in my class. I mean, my students know me at every point of time will have try and have examples throughout this entire interaction, right? Let us talk about toothpaste. Now, how do you attract your consumers? A new player is coming in, player means a specific brand is coming in uh, and trying uh, to sell or push their product in the market. How can you do that? How can you attract your customers by promising something? What is that something? Value. What is your toothpaste going to give to your customers? How would your toothpaste be different from all the other players in, in, in the market? So you have to have a value proposition. You have to ensure, you have to promise your customers, hey, this is what you're going to get when you're trying and utilize it by toothpaste. This is exactly how we are trying and differentiating ourselves from all the other toothpaste brands in the market. Now that is the first aspect of the, uh, the relationship building. Now once your customers have started, started using your toothpaste, your product, now the second stage, which is again a very simple stage, it talks about keep growing cust kind customers through delivering superior satisfaction. Now your responsibility is not over guys. You have made certain promise in terms of giving certain value to your customers out of a certain product, maybe toothpaste, maybe chairs, maybe tables, maybe telephones, maybe whatever product it might be. Now you have to live up to that expectation. You have to ensure that whatever expectations that you have set for your customers are being made by superior satisfaction. Customers should not be felt like, hey, I'm cheated. I've been just pushed the product. There is no after sale service. I, I do not have anywhere else to go. I cannot complain. I do not have a customer care number. So can you guys think that we are, we are narrowing down, we are coming down to the same definition of managing profitable customer relationship? So you're making certain promises to your customers. And at the same time, you're ensuring that whatever promises you're making should be delivered to satisfaction. Very simple, very simple definition of marketing. Now, let us go to... I, I promise to talk about one particular perspective of con uh, contemporary marketing. Now, uh, my research area is olfactory marketing. I don't know how many of you guys know about olfactory marketing, but olfactory is the way we smell something, okay? So it is uh, the other name for fragrance marketing. That's something very, very uh, contemporary these days. In Indian uh, perspective, there, there's not a lot of uh, research ha happening in fragrance marketing. So, but... This contemporary is what is what is contemporary? What is happening uh, at the present, guys? Uh, am I am I audible? Are we still there? Yes, sir. You're audible. Oh, fantastic! Okay, okay, fantastic. Uh, so, contemporary is something that is happening at the present. Uh, uh, what exactly is uh, the most uh, the current state of uh, uh, activities that are happening? 
Now, the current set of activities has not happened just like that, right? So what I'm trying to say is that there's a very slow transformation of the concepts of marketing, right? Now, marketing has got different aspects. It has got branding, it has got advertising, it has got sales promotion, it has got uh, public relations. There's so many aspects of marketing, so many wings of marketing, right? So why don't we just very quickly see the transformation of branding that has happened in the last 50 years? So that will try and take us, take us, build us to the current contemporary area. And then we can discuss something about uh, one of the contemporary aspects of marketing, right? So let us very quickly see how branding evolved in the 1950s. Now, I am sure we all know about the concepts of USP or unique selling proposition, right? So 1950s branding, which is one uh, segment of marketing, started off with a very simple yet very effective uh, understanding of the uh, concepts of unique selling proposition. What is unique selling proposition? Any idea? Can anyone wants to do anyone wants to contribute apart from the lady who is speaking? I mean, of course, the lady is also welcome, but just to have someone else uh, have some interactions in the process. I know, guys, it's very difficult. I mean, uh, teaching itself is difficult. I am a guy who kind of runs around in the class, dances around in the class, and sitting in a chair or a table or a bed and teaching marketing is, is the worst thing I have been doing for the last one and a half years, apart till the time I got into my uh, PhD uh, at St. Petersburg, Russia. But just to have the interaction, just to have the encouragement on my part, can anyone uh, throw some line on, uh, line on unique selling proposition, guys? Fantastic. Okay. Uh, the lady who was talking, may I know your name? Sir, Rupanjana. Rupanjana, what is your, what is your understanding of uh, unique selling proposition? Uh, maybe, sir, uh, maybe when a brand tries to um, be in the market, they should uh, pro uh, they should have some unique qualities which the other band does not have who are running in the right. market. Fantastic. So you have solved my problem. So that, that's exactly how we try and define unique selling proposition. Your product needs to have a, 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 a feature, a quality, which cannot be easily imitated by other, other, other market players. Right. That is where it makes you unique. That is how you try and build your proposition. So I've given a very simple example of uh, head and shoulders, uh, this uh, if you remember, we, we talked about several different uh, uniqueness that they have come out with, right? In terms of maybe uh, black and uh, black and thick hair, right? In, in terms of maybe anti dandruff, right? So you you got to understand how you are going to pitch your product, showcasing that you have got certain features, certain attributes, certain qualities, certain propositions which cannot be easily imitated, which cannot be uh, copied by other competitors. Now that is how that will make you unique. Your product will be unique. Now marketing, sorry, branding uh, evolved from the 1950s with this very simple proposition of unique selling proposition. What happens in the 1960s? Now USP slowly gets transformed into something called an emotional selling proposition. I'm sure, I'm, I don't know how many of you guys but in the class must be knowing but there will be someone who must be talking, knowing about the very classic Pepsi Coca-Cola award. I'm sure whoever knows about it uh, knows about the entire way the, the the projection has happened. The way the entire war got created, right? It's it's it, it made the consumers tend to drink the level of the brand. So consumers were having a, a, an understanding that uh, people who are drinking Coke were perceived to be someone who are very classy, very American, and someone who is drinking Pepsi are kind of more of trendsetters. They are very hip hop kind of set of guys, someone who are very active. Now they have tried to build relationship on an emotional level with the consumers, right? Where they tend to make the consumer drink the level, considering that they are portraying certain role, certain, certain uh, emotional bonding with the brand instead of the product itself. Now, so, can you see the transformation happening? 1950s, unique selling proposition. 1960s, emotional selling proposition. 
What happens in the 1980s? A new concept is evolving in the form of organization selling proposition. And typical examples are brands like Apple and Nike. People don't buy their products, people buy their brands. People understand, hey, I'm trying and going buying something uh, from an Apple store, from an Apple brand. I can trust the product closing my eyes. I'm trying and going uh, buy a pair of Nike running shoes. I don't have to bother about its quality. I don't have to think about how, whether it's going to last for the next couple of years. I, I can trust the brand. So from unique selling proposition to emotional selling proposition, now the concept of organizational selling proposition emerged, right? What next? Next saw the uh, rising of brand selling proposition. I'm sure you know 1990s, it was all about Harry Potter, right? I'm sure we know about the brand. And the brand was such a hit in the market. If you remember, small towels, toothpastes, toys, brushes, toothpaste covers, bed, sheet, bed sheets are coming in the brand name. So the organization is trying and manipulating the success of the brand. They're trying to sell their product with the name of the brand itself, right? A, a, a more Indian version, if you realize, I'm sure we can relate with uh, Krish, right? So till then, I'm see, we, we, can, we, we understand so many times a new franchise of Krish gets released in the market, you see different kinds of toys and associated products, which can actually attract the consumers. In this case, the consumers will obviously be kids in a more uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, having a relationship with the brand, right? So, so it's, it's more about trending from USP, slightly deviated from um, uh, USP to ESP, to organization to brand. Now, 2000, early 2000 saw something very, very interesting, guys, in the form of MSP or me selling proposition. Now, what is me selling proposition? The organizations realize that it is not about just us. It is about the customers as well. Why are we doing uh, building our products, selling our products, manufacturing our products? For whom are we doing it? We are doing it for our consumers right at the end of the day. Why don't we have consumers take more ownership in the entire manufacturing process? And that led to a concept called me selling proposition. I don't know how many students in this class knows about this website called Nike ID. If you don't know, open your mobile, open your laptop once we are done with the class and you can see that you have got an array of customization options for your shoes. Right from choosing the color to the sole type, to the softness, to the materials, you, can, you, you have the entire ownership in terms of designing your product. So you as a consumers are just not experiencing the product. It's just not taking the end product you are equally involved in the manufacturing of the product. So that is how this me selling proposition came into picture. So this itself is more of a holistic marketing perspective. Now today's marketing more about holistic marketing. Uh, after me selling proposition, it, the concept has been more holistic and it, it's about more 360 degree marketing approach, right? So we are trying and getting input from every single aspect of the business, right? So the point is, why do we discuss, why did we discuss this? Just to let you guys know that it's an ever evolving process, it's a changing process. Nothing is constant. Every single day, marketers are thinking about how they can incorporate new aspects, how they can ensure customers are looking at their product, looking at their brands, looking at their services. Because there's so much of competition, guys. There's this absolute cutthroat competition. So you have to be at your shoes, at your, at, your, at your peak, just to understand that you do not lose your consumers in the process. So you have to innovate. You have to be creative in your entire marketing aspect. Now, if I'm not wrong, if you guys, you guys are all from services sector, right? Am I correct? Guys, uh, are we still there or are you guys uh, falling asleep? Oh, uh, yes, sir. no, no. Ah, ah okay, okay. God bless. Fantastic. Okay. You are the only student or someone else is there busy watching their mobiles. I see my MBA students doing, you guys are fabulous. You know, you guys are multitaskers. You're, you're watching a lecture of a, of a, of a, of a, of a faculty at the same time, uh, 
interacting with your with your buddies at the same time maybe watching uh, something uh, of uh, flipkart to do a shopping amazing you guys are fantastic multitaskers and trust me i respect that i mean that's that's fantastic so still if you have some time to understand what we are doing uh, and since you guys are all from service sector that actually implies that i'll talk about one single slide on the characteristics of services how does a product differ from a service and trust me if you're into hospitality service or into hospital service these four characteristics are are kind of going to be a game changer for each and every single student who will be turned into a corporate slave some some years down the lane understanding the nuances of this four characteristics right now a product gets differentiated with services with respect to these four characteristics in the form of intangibility inseparability variability and perishability anyone has any understanding about this four characteristics what is intangibility guys we okay, coming back rupanjana just uh, just to say uh, who else are there kothakoli ankita anushri aditi who else are there uh 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 okay can i have someone else to talk about uh, other than rupanjana pratim pratim chakravarty are you there no you are not okay go ahead rupanjana tell me so intangibility is something uh, we cannot measure by numbers but we can feel uh, the out come by the results as much i know i'll slightly differ you know very simple i mean intangibility is uh, a, a property of a service where you cannot touch the service remember you can touch a product right you can you can touch and feel a product but you can never touch a, a service you can only experience a service and we'll try and share examples for understanding all these four features you talk about a life insurance service it's a service right you can never touch a a life insurance uh, i mean policy right all you can do all you can get is the swiftness promptness from the service provider once your life insurance service is is getting much short so all throughout you did not see that service you did not touch the service but you can only experience and based on your experience you'll be sharing with your peers with your friends with your relatives with your with your enemies that hey this particular service provider was super cool i mean i i uh, my product uh, my service got matured and within 48 hours the money was in my bank account so we are trying an understanding the tangibility in tangi tangibility continuum from this perspective you can touch your product you can touch your mobile phone right you can touch your copy you can touch your pen but you cannot touch a haircut service can you touch it you can only feel that the service is good you can you can only understand looking at your face once you are done with the service hey the guy was cool the guy was professional the guy caught me gave me the look that i wanted to have right so we try to understanding from this intangible perspective one second a uh, characteristic which is very very important from a services uh, point of view which please remember for the rest of your life all these four characters trust me it is going to be needed at every single point of your time the inseparability separate separability perspective what is meant by that since we have got rupanjana who is kind of interactive with me rupanjana any idea what is inseparability no sir Oh, fantastic! No problem. That the service, that the service from the service provider cannot be, uh, I mean, the cannot be separated. God bless. Thank you. Very good. Absolutely correct. Right. So, think from this angle: a product when gets manufactured, we do not see the manufacturing process, guys. Right. All we get is the end product. But unlikely in a service manufacturing, you. me as service receivers are equally involved in the service production process again examples we need examples right 
think about this lady who is taking a haircut, right? Think about yourself. Think about myself. Now, when I've been going to a salon to take a service, which is a haircut service, do you, do you believe, do you agree with me that at every point of time, at every point of time in terms of the service delivery, you instruct the guy, hey, uh, you, can you just uh, take care of my, uh, like, uh, the, the backside, the step should be right, the column should not go very, very, very low. Or, so what am I trying to say is that we give instructions, right? So we are equally involved. We cannot be separated from the service manufacturing process. Unlike products where we only receive the end product. We are not involved in the product manufacturing process. We are only receive, we only receive the end product. So that is how your services gets differentiated with respect to separability, inseparability content. Third will be the variability factor. Very interesting. I'll give one small example I'm sure we all can relate. We will not go very far. Do you believe that your mom cooks for you? Is it a service? Guys, your mom, my mom cooks for me at home every single time, tirelessly, right? Is it a service? Guys, is it a service? You're getting confused. No problem. Forget everything, okay? You go to a restaurant for a dinner. Is it a service? Yes, that is a service. Yes, sir. This is a service. And, oh, you're okay. You're going to a restaurant for a dinner. That's a service. Your mom is cooking you food. She is not giving a service. Wow, amazing, huh? That, that is not correct. She is also giving you a service. Absolutely. Every single time, relentlessly, tirelessly, she is giving a service. We are not acknowledging because, because she is your mom. She, I mean, my mom is my mom. But she is giving a service. Please understand this. Not a commercial service. But at the end of the day, that's a service. How many times, guys... And I deliberately didn't want to discuss about this from a restaurant's perspective. And I'm trying and talking from a mom's perspective. How many times? I'm sure I do it occasionally. I'm sure you all can agree with me. If you disagree, also do tell me. How many times you say, Mama, aaj toh asa namak zada ho gaya tha. Mama, aaj toh asa meetha zada ho gaya tha. Mama, the food was not tasty. Mama, the biryani was a little spicy. Do we, do we complain like this to our mom? Do we do that? Sometimes. Sometimes, but we do, right? A lot yes. of times we ignore, she is my mom. That's the reason maybe, uh, emotionally involved. A lot of times we do complain about the, the taste, the, 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 the ingredients used. Why? Because it is beyond human ability to have the same the reproduction of service every single time, guys. Please understand, it's not possible. You cannot reproduce the same quality of service every single day, every single time. It is absolutely not possible. But you can have the same quality of product batch by batch. You can have the identical number of batteries, A4 size batteries, in in lots in slots in, in batches right but you cannot have that constancy that the same uh, i mean uh, service every single time it is going to differ now i'm sure you you're not convinced with your with our mom's example no problem we'll try and talk about some other other examples can anyone contribute in in uh, showcasing or letting the club understand about the variability perspective of service you guys can give it a try, else I'll be talking about it for sure. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you guys are not earning. Maybe you are not in a position, you will start earning. And you'll be earning like anything once you graduate and do flourish in your own fields. That's what I'm sure you all will. But... At some point of time, maybe you'll have a tax consultant, right? You'll have a tax consultant, right? You, you will be having your own tax consultant, right? Do you believe that you have, a, you have developed a very nice relationship with your tax consultant? 
he knows or you or she knows you personally, you have a very good rapport, and he does your entire uh, accounting and calculations. Do you think you will get the same response when you are visiting your friendly neighborhood tax consultant during the month of June, July, August, and you are trying and pitching to the same guy or girl during the month of March? It's going to vary, right? Do you think a doctor who is giving you, giving you, giving you, giving you, giving you, giving you treatments, giving you a kind of uh, medical uh, resources, will not be giving the same quality of services every single time? A doctor who was super cool, super nice with diagnosing a specific problem might be kind of having uh, difficulties in understanding with a, a separate patient. And in this case, trust me, the patient will be playing a very crucial role because of the inseparability factor. Why I tell you, the patient has an abdominal pain and the patient is saying, hey, doctor, I have a pain in my shoulder. How on earth will the doctor be giving the right treatment, giving the right suggestion, giving the right medicines? So you cannot deny your role being inseparable from the service decision making, rather the service manufacturing process. So service variability is significantly kind of uh, witnessed during service manufacturing, unlike products where the variability factor is very, 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 very. The last characteristics of service will be the perishability part. So what is meant by service perishability? Services tend to end. Services tend to get destroyed. What is meant by perishable? Perishability is something which gets destroyed. Services cannot be, cannot be, cannot be taken forward. It gets destroyed. You don't use a service, it gets destroyed. Example, you have booked a couple of tickets maybe for tomorrow's evening show for a movie. And unfortunately, you cannot make it to the movie. Can you take the same tickets day after tomorrow? You cannot do that. It gets destroyed. You have a doctor's appointment and you cannot make go and visit the doctor. Can you, can you, with the same appointment, can you consult a doctor? No, it gets destroyed. So you talk about any services, unlike products, it has a perishability issue. You cannot continue to carry forward a service. It has a specific time frame. You have to use it. If you don't use it, it gets perished. It gets destroyed. So guys, this is very important when you try and understanding service sector. These four perspective characteristics, features, qualities of services are very, very important for you to understand and how the service qualities or attributes gets differentiated from products. Okay. The last part of the discussion is just to give you a taste or hint of what is meant by fragrance marketing. The fragrance or uh, olfactory marketing is a part overall concept of sensory marketing. Do you know what is meant by sensory marketing in the class? Can anyone talk about sensory marketing? I, 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 I'm, I'm not asking, I'm not having any expectations. I'm just have, want to have the interaction. What is your concept of sensory marketing? No, I I'm sorry for boring you guys for for the last 20 25 minutes just bear with me for another five seven minutes and i'm sure we'll be able to we are not bored, okay. sir. We are not bored at okay. all oh fantastic god bless okay i do something very stupid like bong 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 what brand are we talking about guys what brand are we talking about oh or i do something like Ting, 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 ting. What brand are we talking about? Guys, come on. Sir, Britannia. Ah, fantastic. Right. So, fantastic. Right. So, see, there's no placard. There's no promotion. There's nothing. But the moment I do bong, 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 I'm sure we can relate that we're trying and <clears throat> talking about Intel, which is their signature tune. Ting, 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 ting is a signature tune of Britannia. And it has got so much of popularity, right? So that's one part of the sensory branding. 
uh, sensory marketing, which is termed as sonic sonic branding or sound branding. Now, sensory marketing has got five perspectives in, in terms of marketing your product or services to attract your consumers. True, sound, of course, this bong, 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 bong. The most, uh, what would I say, adopted or prominent approach of sensory marketing is obviously visual cues, visual cues, seeing cues, eyes, right? What do you hear? What do you smell, which is my area of research? The touch perspective, remember? The touch perspective, the tactile part. So we are trying, today's marketers are trying and uh, trying and kind of involving these five perspectives of marketing, uh, sorry, perspectives of uh, human sense organs so that they can try and better relate with their customers, right? And trust me, I'll share the next slide will give us uh, small inputs. I've got two, three slides left small inputs in terms of understanding why olfactory or fragrance has got so much to offer but unfortunately indian marketers are not best utilizing the concepts of fragrance fragrance or olfactory marketing right let us very quickly see the next slide as i was talking about kotler the kotler is quoted very nicely that one of the most significant feature of the total product is the price, uh, sorry, is the place where we try and bought uh, the product to consume, right? So think about you have, you're trying and buying a pair of shoes or maybe you're trying and buying some groceries from a place, right? And he's saying that the, a lot of times what happens, you know, guys, it, it's the place or the atmosphere of the place which influences the consumer's buying process. And a lot of times, trust me, the atmosphere is the primary product you like the place you like the ambience you love the aura you keep coming back to that place so your primary focus which was supposed to be the product or the service but now it has shifted to the atmosphere or the place where you're actually trying and coming and consuming your product or service few fun facts Smell has the greatest emotional impact. I'm sure we can read that because it's it's one of those sense organs which has a direct connection with the limbic system, limbic system with our brain, right? So it has got far, far, far more, more reach, far more emotional context, emotional attachment than all the other sensory cues that are there. But unfortunately, today's marketers use so much of marketing and branding to the visual cues through what we see, and they are trying and neglecting the uh, olfactory cues, right? The next percentage will give us a very clear understanding, right? People remember 35% of what they smell and just 5% of what they see. Now think about the difference, guys. The Today's marketers is trying and revolving around this 5%. The entire marketing campaign is focused on this 5%. But what about the 35 persons which, which is kind of getting unexplored? So there's so much of scope for the marketers, but they're not doing it. So precisely that is where uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm working, I'm trying uh, so that we can actually create awareness for consumers, sorry, for marketers, for brand managers to let them know, hey, there's so much of scope, guys, wake up. What are you guys doing? Why aren't you talking about exploring Fragrance marketing, there's, there's so much to do. Top 10 smells, guys, I'm sure these are the top 10 smells and these are all tried and tested. These are all been researched with hypothesis frame, which uh, numbers, which figures, which establishments, these are the top smells, 10, 10 smells, which make people happy, consciously or semi-consciously. So talking about a freshly, freshly baked bread, or maybe a plain sheet, or maybe some grounded coffee, or maybe vanilla scent, chocolate, fish and chips. So these are the fragrances that actually uh, instigates your mind. It actually builds that passion. It actually wakes you up. Where you try and build an emotional connection with the product and the service. Trust me, a lot of times I've been doing research in fragrance for the last five years before I officially joined with SPB Russia. It actually builds an emotional connection with your consumers. And that is exactly what you want to do. You want them to have that emotional connection built. 
otherwise when i did something very stupid like ting 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 one of the lady shouldn't have said hey sir we're talking about britannia because we know deep down we are very much sure about the tune we are very much sure about the jingle we know the we, we know the brand so it actually connects with consumers on a more emotional level and that is exactly what today's market needs to do there's so much of confusion there's so much of clutter there's so much of cutthroat competition so what exactly are you extra doing or you performing for your consumers so that your consumers talks about your product knows about your brand remembers your product and keeps coming back and buying your product at the end of the day that is exactly what you want to do what you have what you also have now let's talk about last two slides on examples so it's not that i'm just throwing in the air there's so many brands guys trust me i i don't want to open up saying stories because your time is precious i know you have got so many things to do i did a case study with you know sonar itc sonar kolkata and uh, i had to fought like anything you know i mean i had to write to the mother brand in finland because this stupid people were not giving me data they were saying no we cannot give researchers data and trust me when i wrote to finland the original western group they wrote back to me in just half a day marking a cc to the executive director of itc shona in calcutta that please assist the researcher with whatever data he is looking for and i published that paper with a very good journal so i'm not trying to brag about our journal i'm trying to letting you guys know that brands are working and this is so very prominent in the hospitality sector i'll talk about two brands which are very very established brands westin is a very well known brand i'm sure a lot of you guys know about westin as a as a as a uh, chain of hotels right no westin uses a fragrance called white tea the name of the fragrance is white tea and trust me they have an artificial scent web <coughs> delivery system which kind of diffuses that fragrance <coughs> all throughout their properties so it is kind of a signature brand and a signature scent to the entire new level of the uh, the, the group property of uh, westin that they are infusing white tea just to let their customers know that okay this is what we are this is how we wants to get differentiated from all other properties across the world that's one part of the story and trust me they're so so uh, successful that customers demanded more out of this white tea customers ordered for candles scented oils home portion of the same wave and it was such a such a such a successful venture they got such positive vibes such positive response from this entire venture that they tried and built a customized products candles which is a very very common uh, product in the scent industry people are happy to last for scented candles and that's exactly what has happened what had happened with western group that's one uh, success story the other one i'm sure we know about this brand is singapore airlines right now it's amazing it it feels so great i so feel so excited when i share that this kind of thing singapore airlines introduced a fragrance called stephen floridian water guys okay they introduced this fragrance called stephen floridian waters in the 1990s if i'm not wrong and this is a fragrance which was customized by sa and they ensured everyone and everything inside their flight is being kind of soaked in in stephen floridian water right from the costumes that they are wearing right from the towels cool towels that they are giving to consumers to the curtains to the entire lobby area inside i mean the the entire uh, uh, aircraft inside the aircraft everywhere it was diffused and uh, stephen floridian waters was such a such a successful campaign customers tend to keep coming back customers tend to have that emotional understanding hey i travel from this i mean point a to destination b what was the fragrance inside it was such a nice mood creator it was such relaxing so stress i mean you it takes care of the stress it's kind of a stress faster so again sa singapore airlines which is a very very prominent brand across the world in the aviation sector 
they are very very prominently using this fragrance called Stephen Floridian Waters and they are so so successful guys that they have already patented this particular fragrance. No one apart from SA can manufacture this particular fragrance. This is where I'll be ending my presentation. Uh, I would be more than happy to take your questions if you have or any kind of suggestions. My contact details are there. It is there with uh, Torpun as well. You can reach out to me. You can speak to me. You can talk about your uh, marketing aspects. I'm, I'm not an expert, but I have certain understanding of marketing. I, I love uh, what I'm doing, right? So, uh, yes, guys, I, I, I am ready, more than happy to take your questions, your queries, your 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 suggestions, whatever you want to do. Please go ahead. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sparing uh, 40 minutes with me. It was uh, a little one sided. I expected so, this to be a little bit more. Tanisha, yeah. Am I, am I speaking to Tanisha? No, sir. Surabi. Okay. Surabi, go ahead. Yes. So, can you explain me the intangibility part again? Of course. Should I should I go back to the slide, or is it okay if I speak? Sir, actually, this slide is not visible to me. We, I, I know. Don't know I know. Why. I I know. I know. It will be visible now. Is it visible now? No, can you sir. See the slide? Is it is it visible now? Uh, no, sir. Actually, maybe I'm facing some network problem. I guess. No problem. Uh, Tangibility is what? Tangibility is when, when you can actually touch a product, you know, you, you have the legacy, you have the, uh, I mean, uh, opportunity to touch a product. Now think about any product, Suravi. Think about maybe, uh, maybe, 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 maybe uh, AC, maybe a television, maybe this cup, right? This is a product, right? I, I can touch this product, isn't it? You talk about any product, you can touch the product. You can feel the product, right? Now, coming back to service, you talk about any service. I'll, I'll give an example. You have gone to a doctor to, to talk about maybe uh, a problem that you're facing, right? Any disease that you're, unfortunately, you are, I am having. I cannot touch the service of the doctor, please understand. I can only feel, I can only experience, hey, the doctor gave me medicines and I am very well in the next three days time. So the promptness, so the, uh, the execution of the medicines, the right choice of the medicines actually ensured that I've been taking care of the problem that I've been facing. I have been cured of the disease that I've been having. So all through this journey, what I faced is experience. I cannot touch the service of the doctor. So this is exactly what is meant by intangibility, tangibility perspective. Is it clear, Sir Ravi? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. God bless. Anyone else wants to clarify, wants to contribute, wants to add, wants to give me some yeah, feedback, suggestion? Sir, can you please explain the uh, variability? Uh, of course, of course, we can, of course. Variability perspective is nothing. Variability is when, think about, uh, I, I don't know, Torpon. Torpon, are you there? Yes, sir, very much there. Okay, did I took you guys for the industrial visit at Britannia or I took the senior guys? You, you went with me? No. Uh, yes, sir, Britannia. We went so was I, yes, sir. Uh, I was there, right? Yes, sir, you were there. Okay. Now, Torpon knows, I'm sure we, we can all relate. Now, biscuits, when gets manufactured, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an automated system. And you see that there are different kinds of instruments. And Torpon, please quote me if I'm wrong. Just correct me if I'm wrong at any point of time. Please okay. contribute as well. You have those okay. instruments. Yeah, you have those instruments who have been kind of manufacturing biscuits, processing bits, biscuits right from the beginning till they have been packed and they're kind of disposed. Disposed in not the wrong sense, disposed in the sense that now it is ready to be dispatched, right? Dispatch. Right. It's, it's a very, yeah, right. It's a very monotonous, one-sided, single process, right? 
So there is no difference. There, there is there is exactly the same batch of biscuits, the same quality, the same taste, the same size. It's been coming out batch after batch. And you think about the banana. Think about any particular product. You'll have the same scenario. Now coming back to service. Services cannot be delivered exactly identical every single time. And now let us talk about examples, right? Doctor service. As I was saying the other time, one patient has gone to the doctor. The doctor was super great, super cool, super right, super correct in terms of diagnosing the problem, giving the right set of medicines, and the 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 the, the disease of the patient was taken care of. Please mute call. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the this is of the problem has been taken care of. Second, the second patient goes maybe because of the problem of explaining the 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 the, the issue of the patient, the the exact problem that the patient is facing. The doctor could not give the right solution, so it is going to vary. Guys. Please understand, it cannot be the same every single time. And a lot of times, Rupanjana, you know. This variability factor comes down because you, me, as consumers, as service receivers, have got a very prominent because of the inseparability factor of services. And if we are not playing our roles correctly, the variability factor from the service provider is be is going to be more prominent, unfortunately. And that does not happen in products. Our role in product manufacturing is zero. To be honest, zero. Unlike in services, where you, I, and every single service receiver is playing a very, very prominent role to make the service to be a successful service for us. Is that clear? Yes, sir, I understood. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes, guys. Uh, so that means it's basically the variable services that we get. Absolutely, absolutely. You you think about any service. Now I've been talking so much about doctors and and uh, you know I mean uh, hotels and restaurants, right? Let us go to a different sector altogether. Let us go to aviation. Do you think that the that the variability factor is prominent? Yes, it is. Absolutely, it is. I have the same flight today and tomorrow, and my service was super cool. Maybe by xyz brand maybe indie or maybe blah 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 whatever brand we're talking about and the other day i realized hey no the food was not good the hospitality perspective was not was not taken care correctly the flight was late the 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 the, the, the ground staff who were supposed to handle my baggages are very rude to me which is again going to impact my service evaluation process so it is beyond human possibility to have the same kind of service every single time, unlike product. And that is exactly what we are trying and talking from a very good perspective. Sudhav. Thank you, sir. Most welcome. God bless. Yes, guys. That's it? OK, so I'll stop share and, uh, yes. Uh, I had a great interaction. Trust me, I have been, I have been off, off from teaching for some time, you know, because I'm doing, I'm doing a full-time research with uh, an international university. So when Torpon gave me this uh, opportunity, I was so happy to interact with young friends like you guys, and I, I just love to have interaction with you guys. There's so much, so much to learn, so much to get when you interact with young friends, right? You guys so smart so sharp right so fantastic thank you so much for this interaction uh, uh, honestly I, I'm, I'm very open and i would have been more happy if i could have seen your faces but uh, yeah i mean that's okay maybe some other time some other uh, discussions we'll have and we'll, we'll try and take it to the next level uh, yes Torpon. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And I want to say something, students, that uh, when I pursued MBA from Bibiaki College, and sir was the HOD of MBA department there, and learned a lot from sir, and was I was the 2006 meeting batch. And it's, uh, it's really nice to hear you, sir, after a long, long days, and feels great. 
and really i get uh, that same essence that same aroma which i got in your class in vit sir okay uh, the second okay, sir, part uh, is uh, yes he, just just to add second part is take or talk about i am very passionate about teaching so this excitement you will always see the fourth part is completely lie because he loves me he has a lot of affection for me so he was saying that way so yeah sir go ahead <laughs> thank you sir and uh, sir our uh, yeah. our one faculty yeah. member uh, is present uh, in the session uh, mr shogot of energy uh, sir uh, if you want to say something to subham sir you, uh, you can so, so, yes. yeah. yes yeah hi mr chatterjee how are you all good i'm good uh, i'm good how are you so all good here so what as you have claimed that is a lie to torpon because as you have first said that it's a lie it's not that much great but to be very honest torpon has spent 2 years with you and for their curriculum so managing your your, your voice you your, your voice is actually disconnected I, i'm not yeah yeah it's it's better now yeah yeah it's better now yeah yeah so absolutely the thing is that as you Uh, as we have mentioned that torpon uh, uh, sir has mentioned you regarding the thing that we are showed the humble and the modesty because not at all the thing is that actually torpon has spent 2 years and it's totally your you know the aura and everything that provided you know that that dominating and it's not only that it's quite seems to be visible right now and i can see that only this 45 minutes tenure you have just captured the thing and honestly as you have said that tangibility and what we cannot uh, but touch the thing so sometimes that tangible can be intangible right so this intangible Absolutely. service that what you have to guide it it's become tangible it's really touches to our heart to all of the students that touches and really we are motivated uh, all the whatever the phenomenon and whatever the theories we have discussed with it's really uh, admiring and really it's a mesmerizing evening what i have encountered today and thank you so much for over here and on behalf of gnit and gis group i'm looking very forward that from next time onwards that we'll be getting in our panel this type of amazing speakers thank you so much torpon sir for bringing this uh, true gem in our uh, college thank you thank you so much sir for being i mean it's a great pleasure to have you over here Professor so Banerjee, I don't know uh, how much of that I deserve, but really appreciate it. Thank you from the core of my heart. Uh, it, it really, really feels great. I mean, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you uh, so much, sir, for your esteemed today's session. And I hope that our students really enjoyed the session and got a clear picture about the topic elaborated by you. And uh, I hope that uh, we will get your presence in future. Thank you, thank you so much. Absolutely. And if if they if they want to connect with me, uh, my my number, my uh, my. i mean communication uh, perspectives i mean i've been mean, contact details i've been provided i'll share the slides if they need it and they can always communicate at any point of time thank you so much i guess let us let us call it a day thank you thank you sir that i conclude the today's session sir thank you so much boy okay sir okay sir good night sir. take care thank you good night god bless thank you okay.